It's now time for the health segments. And just in case you didn't know, February 15th marked World Childhood Cancer Day. And here in Ghana, it was celebrated as well. And so we'll talk more about that. But just to give you some stati uh, statistics, so it says that about 300,000 children are diagnosed with childhood cancer, of course, annually across the world. And about 80% of these children that are diagnosed with the disease live in low and middle income countries. And that, of course, includes Ghana. Unfortunately, because of late diagnosis and because of high cost of treatment, about 80% of these children who live in the low and middle income countries die from the disease. In 2019 alone, just about 171 of such children uh, were diagnosed with cancer, just at Kolibu. That's even aside uh, the Okonfuanoche Hospital as well. And it's really sad that unfortunately we still have these same issues confronting families across the country. And so we thought that it was wise for us to discuss this very pertinent issue uh, on TV3 New Day today. And so joining me is Dr. Alima Tu Salam, and she's from the Pediatric Oncology Unit at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Good morning, mm -hmm. and thank you for joining us. Thank you. First of all, it must be very difficult treating children with cancer. Well, it is very difficult. I mean, considering our situation, like you said, uh, mostly most of our patients come late so we diagnose late and mm. then the survival rate is decreased when we don't see it early but the good news about childhood cancers are that um, when we are able to diagnose early about 80 percent survival rate. we are able to diagnose early, early but yes. then that means that you need to know the symptoms you and i'm sure that a symptoms. lot of families do not know the symptoms exactly and so they are not able to detect it early exactly. enough so break it down for me what are some of the most common childhood cancers and how okay. do they manifest so the most common childhood cancers we see are cancers of the blood that's what we call leukemias okay and then cancers of the eye retinoblastomas cancers of the kidneys nephroblastomas cancers of the adrenal glands, what we call neuroblastomas, and then cancers of the bones, okay. uh, osteosarcomas. All right, and these you've diagnosed most of them here in the country uh, as well. Yes. I mean, what causes them? Um, we don't actually know what causes childhood cancers, but they are as what we call risk factors. Mm. So you, if you are exposed to radiation, like a mother who is pregnant, mm -hmm. then she goes to the hospital and then she's asked to go and take a, an x-ray and the doctor probably didn't know she was pregnant. Oh. And then she gets exposed to the radiation. That could cause, that cancer. Could cause cancer. And then we also have certain infections, hepatitis B, um, what we call cytomegalovirus, HIV. Okay. Could also Is that what you just called? Is HIV the cytomegalovirus? No. That's different. <laughs> That's different. What's that? It's, it's also a viral infection. Okay. And then we have HIV, which is also a viral infection, mm. which can also cause cancer. And then we also have some genetic predispositions. So there are some, some genetic abnormalities that you inherit that predisposes you to having childhood cancer. So does it mean that if you're born with Down syndrome, you're very likely? You have a 20% a 20 fold chance of having leukemia. Wow. Yes. Okay, this is, this is really serious. Now, how do you even detect? I live with a child. Okay. Of course, there'll be changes, but then how do I know? Okay. that they might be so, developing cancer. Um, we are advocating for early diagnosis, being that if we don't know the symptoms, then we wouldn't even be able to diagnose early. Mm -hmm. So we have what we call the St. Silouin sign. So we use it to help our healthcare workers to be able to diagnose. So we have what we call the eye signs. So if you have a child who has, can I? Yeah, 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 you can do that, okay. So you have a child who has these white spots in the eye, Okay, that, that would looks be like your camera, so yeah. yeah. So that looks like a, a cat's eye. Okay. It's, it's a sign of childhood If cancers. they weren't born with it? No, if they weren't born with it, then you are there with the child and you spot something like this. It is a sign of childhood cancer. Okay. And we have those who come with jaw swellings. So you see there's a swelling on the jaw, which is also a sign of childhood cancer. Um, Sometimes you have a child who, who was born not blind, mm -hmm. then you see that child walking and then hitting tables. It is a sign of childhood cancers. Then we have a child whose eyes initially was not looking somewhere, like what we call Mifemi baby. Okay. Then now, that child, when he looks at you, it's as Like the cross if, eye? Yes, it's as if he's looking somewhere. That could be cancer? That could be a sign of childhood cancers. 
So if you have a child who initially didn't have such signs and, and now you are sudden, detecting that all of a sudden he's okay. developing. So that's what we call the eye signs. All right. Then we have a uh, lumps. So the lumps are the jaw swellings, mm -hmm. the abdominal swellings, then the swelling on the neck. So if you pick up any lump, any swelling, anywhere, a lot of childhood diseases might mimic these things. Mm -hmm. So until you come to the hospital for us to be able to see, you wouldn't be able to know that this is cancer. Okay. Most of us believe in traditional medicine, so we do a lot of traditional medicines before we come to the hospital. That is what also contributes to our inability to diagnose them early. Okay. So we are teaching people to be able to pick up these signs. And then also we have what we call, um, you have a child who is always having fever, 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 unexplained fever. You've treated with antibiotics, treated with antibiotics, fever is not subsiding. Mm. And then a child who is always getting anemic, always being transfused, being transfused. It is also a sign of childhood cancers. Then we have those who come with aches and pains in their bones or they get fractures without any trauma. Okay. Child will be walking, then he comes to the hospital, then you notice that he has a fracture. And then any neurological signs, child complaining of headaches every day, headaches, mm. vomiting early in the mornings, and then you realize that the head is also Swelling. becoming bigger. Okay. And then children who have seizures with uh, or changing gait, like walking and limping. Mm -hmm. A child who originally was not limping, but is now limping. You need to suspect that. When you say child, what, what age are we looking at? So, we, so we are looking at children from age zero to up to 18 years. Oh, to up to 18? Yes. And they will all likely experience some of these? Yes. I mean, so if I've grown up to maybe age 15, 16, and I haven't experienced any of these, does it mean I'm free? No. It okay. doesn't mean you are Okay, free. okay. What, what, what is treatment like for children okay. with so cancer? So for cancers, we, we have three, uh, three treatment modalities. We use chemotherapy, we use surgery, and we use radiation therapy. So depending on the type of cancer you have, you, could have to, you would have to go through all these three treatment modalities. Or there are some when you give only chemo and radiation, the, treat, uh, the patient would get better. There are also some that you may have to do only surgery. And then there are some that you may have to give chemotherapy and also do surgery. And after surgery, continue with chemotherapy. So it depends on the type of cancer you come with. Now, the, the, a few parents have complained that the reason why sometimes they are unable to bring their children to the hospital and seek um, herbal medicine is because it's too expensive yes. to treat cancer in the country. It is. So the problem in Ghana is the treatment for childhood cancer is not on the NHIS. Wow. So that is the difficulty some of us at the pediatric oncology unit are having. But um, some NGOs help. So we have what we call Well Child Cancer. It's a, un a UK NGO. Mm -hmm. They also contribute to the um, diagnosis. So they pay for the diagnostics and then the treatment. And then um, some churches in Accra or in Ghana also help. We have ICGC also contributing to the treatment of has there been any cancer. plan to include even the drugs um, on the NHIS? Well, we've been advocating, been advocating for years, yeah. and we are hoping. We but are until still, then, you're going to have to fund. We have to, to have to. So most of the treatments are funded by these NGOs, and then um, some of the parents too. They have this is really care. sad. Yeah. So we have a lot of some of our patients having to um, difficulties in coming in early mm -hmm. because of these financial but like i said well child cancer is is helping us but you're saying you've been advocating has governments made any comments any commitments so far not that i know of none yes okay to this include childhood cancer on nhis i mean this is not rubbish works done by government because i know that the first lady um at a point donated i think a award or a building a Kiku. Uh, okay, yes. Intensive care exactly, yes. to the Kolebu teaching hospital. So they are making some efforts. Yes. But now it's more about getting drugs. on the yes, NHIS. Getting the drugs How much does it roughly co uh, cost if you have it to It also depends. It, it, it can range between 40, uh, 4 thousand to up to 20 thousand. To treat. Because some of the cancers take a longer time to treat. Exactly. So you would have to.
between four to twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. So a parent comes and can't afford. What happens? And let's just say that there's no money available from any M NGO or whatever. For now, we do you we treat have them for free. We have help. Yes. For okay. now, we have help from World Child Cancer, like I said. Okay. So any parent that comes to Kolebu Teaching Health Hospital with a child with childhood cancer, we you help. help with. What about, um, you know, the, the people that work on the ground as well? I'm talking about oncologists because at a point it said that we had very limited number of oncologists in the country uh, okay. to treat the children. So at Kolebu Teaching Hospital, we have two consultants who are um, oncologists. And then currently the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons is also training pediatric oncologist. So we have about um, six doctors at, in training at Kolebu Teaching Hospital. But that's not enough. And I'm if you're saying that you record, you're one of them. <laughs> that's really lovely to know. But if you're saying that we, we recorded about 171 cases uh, in 2019 alone, six oncologists, that's not enough yeah, to it's, treat it's, the children. Yes, it's not. We still have to train more oncologists so that at least most of our teaching hospitals would be able to take care of such cases because currently we have case patients coming all the way from Wa, all the way from uh, Boku, all the mm. way from Tamale to how, come to... How did you mark the World um, Childhood Cancer Day? Okay, so for us at Pediatric Oncology Unit, we, we are going around uh, radio stations and TV stations teaching people about the early warning signs of childhood cancer so okay. that we will be able, like I said, if we are able to diagnose early, about 80% of our patients are able to survive. We have some of our patients who have survived and they are currently in the universities. And oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So then survival rates would be high very if you high. only come in early yeah. enough. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I've been speaking to Dr. Alima Salam, and she is a pediatric uh, oncologist at Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Thank you so much for Thank speaking you. to us. And please make sure that if you notice any of these changes in your child, you rush them to the hospital just so they can get checked in case it may be cancer.